Today we're going to be talking about flooding. And I don't mean just avoiding flood zones, flood plains, flood ways. I think we can all kind of agree that most of us don't want to buy in a flood plain. Now sometimes you make an exception and you say, you know what, I want to be as close to the water as possible. I don't care. I don't care about the high cost of insurance. I don't care if I flood every now and again. I want to be on the Gulf of Mexico. I want to be on the Atlantic. I don't care. I want to be on the river. And if that is you, I totally get it. I respect that. But we're talking today specifically to people that do not want to be on a floodplain and they also don't want their house to flood. So I make that distinction because just because you didn't buy in a flood zone in a FEMA deemed flood zone does not mean that your house is not going to flood. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about that because there is a new house bill that is now truly going to go into effect. This is going to be a new disclosure. This is brand new. We're going to be utilizing it beginning October 1st. So as of the filming of this video, it's not even out yet. We're going to see it as real estate agents next week. But of course, on this channel, we keep you educated on everything up to the minute. So we're going to be talking about it right now because if you are out looking for a home, I want you to know this. All right, so if this is the first time we're meeting, let me introduce myself. My name is Barrett Pastor. I've been a real estate broker for over 26 years. So hopefully I'm coming to you from a place of knowledge and experience, and I can help you navigate all things Florida real estate. And by the way, if you would like to consult with me one-on-one, -on -one, if you just want somebody to talk to, do a Zoom call, you want to do a phone call, I do offer 40-minute consultations. If you're looking for someone who is not going to give you the sort of brochure living answers, somebody that you can ask that's going to give you the real deal, the real answer, even if it's bad, even if it's not what you want to hear, I do offer 40-minute consultations, and that is where we can do a deep dive into what your real estate goals are. Maybe you're not even looking to move for a year or three years or five years and you need just some guidance. Point me in the right direction. Get me set up. I have a bunch of questions. Let's talk through it. That is where you're going to want to grab some time down in the description box on my calendar and we can spend some time doing a deep dive into what your particular needs are in terms of real estate. All right, so the new forms that are out, the new flood disclosure form that's out and required on every single resale transaction. Did you notice I used the word resale? Did you notice I used the words resale? So somebody owns it, not built from the ground up. Resale, not builder contracts, our contracts. We're required as real estate agents now to ask our sellers on every single transaction to fill out a flood disclosure. Did you hear what I said? A flood disclosure. Did I say floodplain disclosure? No, I did not. Flood disclosure. So what does that mean to you? That means that before you sign on the dotted line, of making an offer, not closing, of making an offer, the seller is now required to tell you if their property has ever flooded. Now, here's the thing. We had to get some clarification on what the word flooded meant. Does that mean standing water? Does that mean two feet of water? What does that mean? Because you know there's always going to be a seller out there that's going to have been up to their knees in water and they're going to say, Well, I don't want to disclose that because I don't really call that a flood. Well, guess what? That's a flood. So really any puddling of water, whether it be permanent or temporary, if the seller has ever filed a claim, a flood claim, or, or gotten assistance from FEMA in any way, 
due to a flood of any sort. So of any sort, you know, of course, that is not going to fall under the category of like a sewer or a broken pipe, nothing like that, because that's a totally different thing. And we're going to we're going to talk about that because I'm not sure how I feel about this. But as it relates to something that's happened from like natural circumstances, whether it's a creek or it's the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic or whatever it is, the river. So a flood, puddling of water, flood water, enough water that you had to file a claim, that now has to be disclosed. Now you might be saying, wait a minute, Bear, you're telling me that you didn't have to disclose that before? You did not have to disclose that before. Can you believe that? In many states, some of you may know, I hope, maybe not, I don't think I've ever brought this up. I do hold a broker's license in Missouri as well. And even in Missouri, that's required. You do have to disclose if you live in a flood plain. If you're on any sort of flood plain, you do have to disclose that. In Florida, it was not a disclosure item. How crazy is that? Well, now it is not just floodplain. So if you are Mr. and Mrs. Seller and you don't live in a deemed designated floodplain, but when the hurricane, let's say her, I say the hurricane because Hurricane Ian was such a huge catastrophe in Florida and Southwest Florida. But let's just say that you live, you live in Naples and you don't live in a floodplain. You have no flood designation at all. You don't carry flood insurance. You have a mortgage on your property and you're not required to carry flood insurance. So you wound up with a foot of water throughout your property, whether it's, I don't care if it's a single family home, a condo, whatever it is, you had a foot of water in that property, you had a flood. So you have to disclose that. Now, even if you're not in a floodplain, you have to disclose that. So let me just be clear, any what is what's called water inundation, any water inundation, which is a little bit loose, but that's what they're calling it. Any water inundation has to be disclosed. You have to disclose that on a separate form, not on, it's not on our seller's disclosure. It's not part of the contract. There's a separate form that's gonna be out October 1st. You have to fill that out. It's gonna ask you a whole bunch of questions. And that way, you know, really you have to look at it this way. If you're a seller and you feel some kind of way about that and you're like, well, I didn't even want to mention that I had six inches of water in my bathroom and it kind of came through because of the grade of the land and the elevation of the whatever. I didn't really even want to mention that. Yes, we had to pull up part of our flooring and replace it, but we paid for that. No, you have to disclose that. You have to. You don't want to hear yourself saying, Well, listen, Your Honor, I really apologize, but I didn't want to have to disclose. No, you don't want any part of that. The seller's disclosure and these disclosures in general, they will either put you in or keep you out of court. So it's really important, you know, if you're saying, let, you know, let's just use Hurricane Ian as an example. If you're selling and you're disclosing that, yes, yes, okay, fine. I took $5,000 from FEMA. I did have a situation with flooding. And you're competing with all these people, let's say within a half a mile radius of you, they have to disclose this same thing as well. So you're all on even playing ground, so to speak. And then for the buyer, it at least gives the buyer a little bit of assurance that they at least know if the property they're interested in has had flooding issues or not. And as a buyer, that's so important. I can think of so many areas in Sarasota, and I'm talking about way, miles and miles away from the coast, that seem to sit in kind of a little bit of a soup bowl, and they're flooding. They've flooded recently. Nobody knows why. They're nowhere near the coast, so you wouldn't think that would be happening. It's definitely not storm surge, but they're flooding. Could it be hydrostatic coming up through the ground? I don't know, you know, I'm not an engineer, but these things do happen. Same thing throughout 
Naples, Estero, Fort Myers, where you might say, well, wait a minute, that's seven, eight, nine miles from the coast. How could that be flooding? It does happen. There's ground that lies a little bit low that you wouldn't think would flood, but it does. The other thing is, you may think, well, if I don't buy in a flood zone, then I should be in the clear, but that is not always the case. I'll use Hurricane Ian again, and they're not, that is not the only hurricane that caused this problem. Sometimes it's tropical storms that will cause this problem, but just because you are not in a deemed flood zone does not mean you're not going to flood. So you definitely want to know if the house, the best determiner of the future is the past. So if the house that you're thinking about buying has had flood problems before, you need to know that. That's something that really always should have been disclosed and now it's going to have to be. Now, the one thing that I had mentioned to you before is plumbing, you know, pipes, things like that. That's one thing because that, that is going to be more disclosable on the seller's disclosure. But sewers, like for example, Naples Park in Naples, that does have a tendency to flood. The sewers, for whatever reason, they just don't hold the water properly. And that, you will see water up and down those streets. So if that's not a flood zone, let's say you get lucky on one of these streets that the elevation is up high enough that it's not a flood zone, but that property does flood, but it's from a sewer, you don't have to disclose that. See, that to me, so there are a lot of communities. Downtown Naples is a good example. Downtown Sarasota around St. Armand Square, a good example. A lot of times it is the sewers that are causing the flood problem that isn't disclosable under this new flood disclosure. And for me, I feel like, I don't know, I don't think that's a great idea because if I'm buying a house in that area, I want to know if the likelihood of flooding is there. So again, I'm going to tell you it is astronomically important that you work with an agent that knows the area and tells you the real deal because if you're working with me, I'm definitely going to tell you that, look, this area does tend to flood.